Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. What up, everybody? Welcome to issue three of the Spinner Rack. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, for Comics Remix, alongside... Big B. Brian Adams. That's right. Now, in issue two, we discussed the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 700, the good, the negative, depending on how you look at it. It was a big clusterfuck, or it was great, uh, alongside the issues that built up to it uh, and then some of the fallout from it. But now, in this issue, we're really going to get into the fallout, which is Superior Spider-Man. That was the book that replaced Amazing Spider-Man. You know, because after being spectacular and sensational and amazing and all the other adjectives, what's left that's not taken by another Marvel product? Superior. And if you're a cocky, scientific, crazy douchebag who is evil as shit and just killed your arch enemy, Superior is a good way to go. Yeah, I'd say. I'd be like the retired Spider-Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? The overweight, balding Spider-Man. So no. as a recap to issue two, uh, with Amazing Spider-Man 700, Dr. Octopus finally got the win over the hero, and uh, he ended up switching... <laughs> Via mind swap. Yeah, he did a mind swap, and uh, he is now Spider-Man. And as Brian explained it in our previous issue, uh, you, I mean, you nailed it. You know, it's just like, hey... Um, well, he's better. Yeah. He's not just going to be what Peter Parker was. He's not just going to live up to the Parker standard. Right, right. But he's going to go even greater. How you were like, uh, well, yeah. You know, His he's cockiness? Got the, no, no, no. He's got the memories. Oh, yeah. You know, and he's like, wow, all this... Thing. You remember the, the explanation you did. Like, it's in my mind, but I just can't fucking spit it out. Nice. Where he was just like, you were saying, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I know now you're experiencing right, all the right. stuff you went through, I'm sorry, you know, I'm such a douche, but now I'm going to be cool, I'm going to be better, you know. Right, except I'm going to be superior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so, like, I know everything you went through, I know what it's like to be you, but I'm going to be a better you. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, that was <laughs> the explanation. Um, my opinion on 700 was, yeah, it was kind of negative, but, and then with, with two weeks later, they released Superior Spider-Man number one, it came out January 9th, and, um, yeah, it's kind of sad, I remember these dates, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to give you the date on that. Oh, I, dude, I'm here. It was know, quick. Two weeks later. You know, it was a lot better than waiting a month, like, back in the day. 700 came out December 26th, last year, right 2012. I got it for Christmas, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Because your girl was asking I was me reading it on Christmas. So, um, anyway, <laughs> Superior Spider-Man started out to mixed reviews, I would say. You had, on one hand, the angry-ass fans that were just super, like, let's stab and crucify Dan Slott for what he's the done. The death threaters. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's, I can't believe he's doing this. Now he's superior. This is going to be crap. What is this garbage? And then you had those casual ones, like we discussed, who come in just out of the blue and like, hey, you know what? It's a new Spider-Man number one. Let me pick it up. In 10 years, it'll be worth a gazillion dollars. But then at the same time, you also, it also, what it did was bring in fans like yourself, who were off the book for a while. You know, it was like a new chance to start over, a new number one. Why not let me jump on and see what's up? So it was 50-50 in terms of popularity, you know? I kind of feel like I'm the only person that didn't think it sucked. Really? Yeah. Now, starting off, I would admit, I was like, this is this is horrible. Like, I mean, before Superior, before we even get into Superior 1, I think the fact that there was going to be a Superior 1, and it was going to be Otto Octavius as Peter Parker, and not actually Peter Parker, I think I was the few people that were like, this is going to be cool. I know it's going to happen, but this is going to be cool. Right. And that is probably one of my, like, I love it. I think it's a great book. I mean, you were talking about one day in the store, and I think you nailed it. This might only go on for a year, maybe less, but I think their whole goal here, and, and you can see it already in the issues, is that he's ruining Peter Parker's credibility. Mm -hmm. He's too cocky. He speaks too much like himself. Mm -hmm. He's too much him and not enough Peter, which kind of almost ruins the ending of 700. Yeah. But at the same time, I guess it kind of perpetuates it because he did. At the end, he was like, "Oh, you know, I'll be, I'll be you. I'll live up to your standard. I'll keep, you know, the legacy going on." But at the same time, I'm going to make that legacy better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, has he made it better? He's done some decent things. I love the scenes with him and Mary Jane. Now you're caught up, right? You've read it. Oh yeah. Okay, so we can break it down by issue. Let's start with issue one. In the first issue, we're introduced. Oh, actually, no. There is another title that came out. Oh, uh, Avenging, Avenging Spider-Man fifteen point one was released alongside Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man. Okay, right, can, can you say let's give this book a boost in sales? Well, besides that, well, it, did, it certainly worked. I tell you that much. I bought it, dude. That book is just always selling like crazy now. But. To reiterate, 15.1 was just basically the epilogue to 700, where if you're a hardcore reader and you, you're all about continuity, you really need to pick that one up. Because in that issue, it's Octopus dealing with the fact that he is now Peter Parker and him redesigning the costume to make it his own, which is the superior suit, you know? So, Which is the greatest friggin' Spider-Man costume ever, in my opinion. 
It's the same I thing with it. lenses. It's black. black it's black. Red, yeah. Forever. Dude, since Marvel vs. Capcom 2, or maybe it might have even been Marvel vs. Capcom, when, you know how when you're playing those old fighting games, I know I'm getting a little off subject here. When you're playing those old fighting games, if you'd hit a different button, different it'd give costume. you a variation of the costume. Oh, yeah. That was the first time I saw Dude, a I black and red Spider-Man. Capcom the other day. Okay. It's the first time I ever saw a black and red Spider-Man costume. I thought that was great. Love it. The weird little talons on the foot. I don't know what that shit's about, but I like it. So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fashion Designer over here. So in issue one, I thought it was pretty brave, and I can say this now because we're in the Superior and not really, uh, I couldn't say it with the 700 episode. The thing that Marvel and Dan Slott specifically they were touting was, you know what, this is the new status quo. Doc Ock is now Spider-Man. Deal with it. Peter is dead. Peter is gone. Peter is never coming back. I could understand that. Okay, you're definitely trying to make this big point. You know, you're obviously trying to do sales. You're going to get the attention. No, absolutely. you got to respect that. Right. Okay, you want, you want them to come out and be like, screw you whiny bitches. This is what it is. Right. If you don't like it, don't buy it. This is what gets me, though, for those of us that have read Superior Spider-Man number one. So which right. was released two weeks later. We're going to jump all the way to this now? Yeah. Peter's back. Yeah. Okay. That right there is a slap in the face to fans. It's like, you told us, you lied to our faces for the book. You know, we're supposed to give you credibility and we're supposed to respect you for that. As a company and as a writer, you're sitting there telling us, Peter's gone, that's it, he's not coming back, it's out of Yeah, work. Yeah, what happened to this is the status quo. Yeah. It looks like you just shit on your status quo. Two weeks later. At the end of issue one. At the end of issue one, for those that don't know, Peter's beating the crap out of Boomerang to the point where he's, a, or Ock, Peter, whatever you want to call him. We'll just call him Ock. So Dr. Octopus is beating the hell, as Spider-Man, right he's beating the hell out of Boomerang to the point where he's about to give him the last punch, which basically would have been the death punch. Boomerang. You know? And on the last panel of this page, a blue hand grabs Spider-Man. He's just like, but he doesn't, Spider-Man obviously doesn't see it. It's just referred to to him as a feeling that he has, that he shouldn't throw that last punch like a hesitation. And the hesitation turns out to be Peter Parker. It's like, and he even says, I don't know how I'm here. But I'm obviously here for a reason, and I'm going to find a way to get my body back. It's just like it's like Bill Cosby and Ghost Dad, or, or Patrick Swayze and Ghost. You know, like, they're there, but they're not there. Right. That's exactly See, what it is. Now, I'd like to say that when this whole Superior thing started, I, as an avid comic book reader, and I'm sure as yourself, you knew this wasn't going to last. Oh, of course not. You knew this was something that was going to go on maybe a year, maybe two years. I figured... They'd give Otto at least a good 6 to 12 issues before being like, oh, guess what? Peter's really kind of still in there. Mm -hmm. but not the, just two but, weeks later. Yeah, not the end of the first issue. Right. That was, so much for your fucking status quo. That is what really pissed me off. And then it gets worse. Um, I don't know if you've got the AR app on your phone. That I do. AR app phone. Uh, fans, if you don't have the Marvel AR app, or if you do and you haven't used it on Superior Spider-Man number one, do yourself a favor and look at the last page of artwork on there where Peter's declaring that he's back and all this stuff. And use the app. I guarantee you, you, after, if you haven't already and you think I'm just talking out of my ass and I am like a dance lot hater or something. Now, I'm not a dance lot hater. I'm not. It takes balls to do what the guy did. I give him all the credit in the world, you know. Obviously, I can't write Spider-Man, otherwise I'd be doing it. Right. I sit here and I'm the kind of guy that discusses this stuff and I sell the stuff. <laughs> but, my back to my point. If you guys have the AR app, go ahead, do yourself a favor and use it on the last page. Turns out, it is a hidden letters column. It's a, obviously a video. It's Dan Slott, uh, edited, editor... Steve Wacker, I believe, and uh, Ellie Pyle, or Pyle, whatever, whatever her name is. Some chick. I remember that. The girl editor. The, so the girl editor. The letters in this AR app letter column basically are fans either praising 700 or bashing 700. More so bashing it. And the thing that upset me is the ones that bashed it, Dan Slott is laughing at them. Just pretty much like, ha ha, yeah, I kill Spider-Man. With look. his cocky sluggishness. Yeah, like, you know, just making Danny DeVito look like a giant. Like, hey, look, I went ahead, I, I did this, I did that, you bought the book, deal with it. Right. You know, ha, 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 joke's on you. That, so you, so you mean, didn't appreciate Dan Slott's cocky attitude towards the fans? No, because it's like, dude, you're you're sitting there seriously, like, laughing in their face. You're shitting where you eat. Yeah, it's like, sure. you don't do that. It's one thing to be like, you know, ha, ha, I pulled one over on you. But to constantly, just to be like, you know, to put it in the letters column where you're just, like, teasing the fans the way you did. Like, you know, ha, 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 ha. Like, who does that, you know? So by the end of issue one of Superior Spider-Man, I was not impressed. I was pissed. I was like, you know what, no, like we said earlier, this could have lasted. Why bring him back after two stupid weeks? This is not going to, yeah. I don't like this. This is horrible. I was, uh, to be such a supporter of it and to have gotten in discussions with people and stood up for the validity of what they were doing, mm -hmm. for them to pull around right the last issue. Right. And be like, oh, guess what? That, to me, I felt it was bullshit. Yeah. 
I love this book. I, I'm not gonna lie, I still like it. It didn't change my feelings on it. But they could have waited, man. I mean, come on, how long did how long did Ben Riley get to be Spider Man before yeah. they pulled the rug out from under him? You knew it was gonna happen. You right. knew it was. Right. But, but they, I mean they, shit, they the guy got two years. Yeah. Not even an issue, man. Yeah. What the Dan Slot? Yeah. You prick. So I just I hated it. And then two weeks later, issue two came out, and I read that, and I was just like, this still sucks, because Peter's just being a whiny yeah. ghost. Issue three... And, and and conceding to where Ock has done things better than him. Yeah. You know, I give Peter credit for that. You know, he's like, oh yeah, Ock was better than that. The only thing I personally liked about issue two was the date scene between him him and Mary Jane, and how he's got caught staring at her breasts. I thought that was hilarious. It's just like, when it comes to the ladies, he's everything Peter wishes he could be. He's just cocky. You know? He's just not that suave, though. He's not. But it, He he's tries very, to be. Yeah, and it comes off is uh, comedic. It does. You know? It does. And with all this going on now, and like, you know, Jameson being a Spidey fan now, you know, it's just like, all right, whatever. Cut to the chase. Over the last five, six issues, whatever they're at, I oh, find okay. myself reading this, like, one of the top two books I have to read the week it's released. I don't know what it is. It's like, it's, it, I've caught the hook, you know? I'm yeah, the fish, no, I caught absolutely. The bait, and now I've got to read it. They hooked you in. Yeah, i got to see what happens. As, they hooked you in. As horrible as it may be, as bad as it may be, in my, all in my opinion, I still have to see what happens. i got to say, okay, how do they do this? Now, with the solicitations for issue nine, there's supposed to be another big status change, status quo, and... Uh, if you've seen the cover art... Is that before or after the Age of Ultron tie-in? After. The uh, Age of Ultron tie-in is issue 6 AU. Yeah, I know. Um, but issue 9, <laughs> the cover art... The, the <laughs> I art just rolled my eyes for people. <laughs> the the <laughs> solicitation for issue 9 is Spider-Man's head with his brain showing him the brain of right. Superior Spider-Man. It's got Octopus fighting Peter Parker. Right. So it's like, okay, now there's an internal struggle. That's the only thing I can take away from that. Especially because they're fighting in a brain. What else is there? Yeah, no, that's what I would take it as too. And again, why, why couldn't we do this 12 issues out? Right. Why couldn't we just let Ock have his day for a year? Yeah. Hell, six months even. Well, six the way issues the, the anyway. Marvel publishes books. It yeah, what like, is the, There's two a month, like right? Four months. Yeah. Four months is like. Would that have been so issues? bad? You no, I, I totally get it. Like, I was digging the hell out of it and just to do it so quickly. Now, issue 10's got a solicitation saying, oh, the new, the new era starts here, you know, things are different. And the Green Goblin's back. Like, what do you mean? Okay, wait. You're trying to dissuade fans here for a second. You're like, oh, the Green Goblin's back. Trying to hop up, hype up the Green Goblin. First of all, which Green Goblin is it? Second of all, who gives a shit? The point I think is it's what Norman. happens with the, with the status. You know, no, that's yeah. what I want to know. No, that's... Which, I mean, ties into a lot of different things. Um, I don't know. Take it how you will. Age of Ultron. I'm not sure how that's going to tie into this. I'm not sure, you know, I've... Have you read the first two issues? I have. Okay. I feel like that's Peter. Yes, exactly. You know? Exactly. Of course, I guess that's what happens when you write a comic three years ago and then try and put it out now. That book sucks. I, seriously, I'll just shit hot lava all over that book. <laughs> two this issues whole, in. It sucks two issues it in. Sucks. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> I can't... It's 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 House of M all over again, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, House of M, man. I, it, ben, isn't that Bendis? Bendis. Fuck Bendis. <laughs> You know, I like the guy. I think we did a lot of bashing in the Marvel Now episode of Bendis. <laughs> but, I mean, he does some decent things, but he does some things that just suck. Right. And I mean, nobody can hit a home run. Not every time. Every time. But uh, Unless I, your name is Jeff Johnson. It's, it's again, you're, you're detracting from the superior Spider-Man and the status quo thing by doing an Age of Ultron tie-in. Mm -hmm. And Spider-Man's voice clearly in Age of Ultron is that of Peter Parker. Right. Like, why couldn't... If Bendis is such a great writer and they want him to write everything and they want to promote everything that Bendis does, like he shits gold, mm -hmm. which he doesn't. How do you know? Because <laughs> it sucks. Paper? It sucks. It would still smell like shit, that's all I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> for them to not go back and do a rewrite and give Superior Ox voice. Right. Kind of takes away from the whole story. Yeah. We could do a Marvel event book episode, and I could just shit all over Bendis all fucking day and Marvel <laughs> events. Marvel does some of the worst events ever, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking right. about the it's failure that is, well, the semi-failure failure failure of Superior Spider-Man. That's the question. Because like I said, I mean, that's, where, that's where the thing is. You got to think about, is it a failure? I said I, I didn't, I wasn't really a fan of 700, but I got it. I understand it. Same with Superior at first, you know, especially with them bringing Peter back. But as every issue goes on, I find myself more and more into it. You know, and like I said, it's one of the top three books. No, I absolutely. Read. When there I are, get that, this, the week it comes out, man, it's the first thing I read. There are only four titles that I buy that I have to read as soon as I see them. And one of them is Superior Spider-Man, and like I just said, I have no idea why. 
The other three I definitely know why, because I like them, you know? And those three, just for those that are curious, are Mark Waid's run on Daredevil, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Bendis' all-new X-Men, which I will admit, when I first heard what it was going to be about, I was like, this is garbage. Okay, you're bringing the X-Men from the past to now? Why? And then what happens once this current story arc is over? If they stay here, doesn't that alter how the world's... I don't even want to get into the whole time-space continuum thing. That's a hell, That's a headache. But every issue... I'm finding, like, oh, my God, i got to read this. And to be honest, I read, if all new X-Men and Superior come out in the same week, I read all new X-Men first. Yeah, so do I. I always save the best for last. No, you're talking about saving the best for last? <laughs> this is what I did. I just named three out of my four, right? Four, of course. My DW, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But that's off subject. But those are the top four books I have to read as soon as I get them. Superior and all new are definitely on my list. Yeah. Usually Batman, but, you know. There's a slight failure on that last arc like we discussed in a previous issue. But, uh, you know, it's to tout this as being the status quo and this is what it's going to be in, they really are just dropping the ball, man. Mm -hmm. And it shows a lack of disrespect. I'm sorry, it shows disrespect. A lack of respect, if you will, to the fans that actually stood by it, like myself. Right. Like, oh, this is how it's going to be, this is what it's going to be. It's, you know, it's going to be this, you know, this is the status quo. And then Brathgate, no. (laughs) We lied, you bought the book. Oh, yeah. And let's, we're three printings in now, and yeah. the suckers are still coming for it. Now, uh, about a month or so ago, they started soliciting um, Spider-Man in your fire. And it had a picture of the superior Spider-Man web swinging away with the Avengers in the background. The Avengers obviously get rid of him. And you're just like, wait, did his, uh, did his ego get in the way? But it doesn't seem, the Avengers don't seem like a team that'll be like, you know what, we don't like you because you're cocky, get off. Because, I mean, they got Tony Stark. Right, Tony Stark's such a humongous asshole. So it's just like, like but, if. if Everything that went down, like, you know, every every, every event book since. Let me see those things. To not get rid of Stark. I mean, come on. He sucked in Civil War. He sucked AVX. Right. I mean, he really... And, you know, I'm not going to get into that because we're going to talk about AVX. But the guy sucks. <laughs> he's got a shit attitude. Right. He thinks he's better. So I really don't see how Otto Spidey could be worse than that. Yeah. But obviously, like a conversation me and you had before this all started, mm-hmm. I think it was even before issue one even dropped, you had told me that your thoughts on this book was that they're going to do this, and they're going to tear down Spider-Man. And he's going to lose his job, he's going to lose the Avengers, he's going to be, he's going to become a disgrace, and then Peter will come back. Mm-hmm. And he'll have to start back at square one, where the real interesting Spider-Man stories happen. Yeah, and uh, when they solicited that whole Spider-Man is fired thing or whatever, everybody wondered why. Now, if you've read Superior Spider-Man number five, I think pretty, it's pretty clear, if this stands, why they did it. Oh, yeah, the shot in the face? Yeah, he ends up shooting Massacre dead in the face. In you the know? face! Now, I've got, for those, obviously you guys can't see us, I've got the book in my hands right now, if you guys don't mind, it's Masterpiece Theater Time. Right. Uh, basically, a quick snippet is, you know, Spider-Man's <laughs> got the gun pointing in Massacre's head, and he's like... So what now? Do I have? Do I web you up? Leave you for the cops with a friendly little note? Wait till you break out and kill again? See, and he said, "Wait till you break out." Now that's, I think, my opinion. Either Doc Ock coming through to speak more like Peter, or the fact that Dan Slott just missed it because Doc Ock wouldn't say "till." He speaks very proper. No, know? it does. But it actually says, "Wait till you break out and kill again, capture you again, over and over." How many are dead and dying here? When is it enough? What should I do? Tell me. And then some old man is like, do it! <laughs> totally do it. So he squeezes the trigger. Massacre apologizes and says, you know, oh, I found the error of my ways. Now all of a sudden, Spider Ghost shows up and he's like... Oh, hey. because now Massacre's had feelings. Yeah. He's experiencing feelings again. Yeah, feelings. So Ghosty Spidey... He's like, no way, he can be cured. Save him, <laughs> save him. Could call him dead-ass Jedi Spidey. That's what he looks like. Yeah. Looks yeah, like yeah, a Jedi with that. Yeah. Pretty much. So then Superior is like, you uh, you are who you are. Like, that killer will always be hiding inside you. There's only one solution here. The next panel, gunshot. Now, if you take those words, maybe uh, maybe that's like just some foreshadowing of things to come. You are who you are. You know, if you're a killer, you'll always be a killer. Mm. Look at Doc Ock. He's a mad man. <laughs> maniacal scientist that's, that's you will good, always be that's a good uh, analysis on this I didn't pick that up it's very good you get a gold star thanks you know and then another Yay! part <laughs> is the ending when the chick that hired Massacre to do all this mm-hmm. she's crying in her apartment and she's like oh this is all over blah 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 but then Spider-Man has a, the like, spider the bites yeah, those spider are awesome sneak in her apartment and he takes over her TV screens he's like this ain't over yet or, no Miss Pullman not yet she's like what there's still there's still your part in all this it's like your secret bank account paying a twisted man who do twisted things I am familiar with the practice. You paid them your blood money, you sat back and watched, and you told no one. Well, now you can tell the authorities. Tell them or answer to me. Sounds like Christian Bale and Batman again, remember? <laughs> but this is the thing that really got me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. 
This way to the city! This way to me! Um, and he's just like, I see everything in the city. Everything. That is my power and my responsibility. This is what got me. To watch over and judge you all. Like, all right, that's when you know it's getting there and you're like, it's not Spidey. You know, what? You got to wonder, okay, you know Peter's coming back. But like I said, that solicitation of Superior number 10 where they're like, oh, the Green Goblin's back. The picture is still the Superior Spider-Man costume. It's not like Peter came back and switched it over and... So who knows? Like I honestly I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a te- it's another tease to fans where they're like, oh, you know, the status quo changes again. It's Oct versus Peter for control. Maybe Oct does actually win out, and then Jedi Spidey disappears for good, or until Marvel decides or, to have another. Event. Or until Oct and Mary Jane fall in love and try to get married, and Mephisto comes back and says, uh uh uh. That's exactly. <laughs> that's another thing I, I alluded to before when we were having these discussions in the store. That was one thing I was like, okay, how do they bring them back? Maybe. Maybe Ock being Peter knows that deal that Mephisto had with Peter and Mary Jane. You know, and Mephisto's just biding his time because, you know, let's face it, he wants to see Ock screw up. You know, and then he's going to come back and be like, we had a deal or whatever. And then, you know, it's like, and he swaps him back, which would, I mean, would be a cheap cop out. But at this point, you almost expect it <laughs> yeah. to happen because at this I mean, point isn't it, it all just a bunch of cheap cop yeah. outlets <laughs> but it would make sense if it did yeah, this, this is the one solution I can see that makes sense it would make sense to the overall story right it would or unless like some blonde Peter Parker shows up and like hey who are you he's like my name's Ben Riley. I'm Peter Parker I'm the real Peter you know and they go to Clone Saga again or whatever you know I mean I don't know I'm yeah not, cause dead isn't dead in comics unless you're Uncle Ben yeah that's the or Captain Stacy yeah the, and, or no no Gwen's come back a couple times I thought you were gonna as say a clone. Gwen yeah that's as true a clone. twice right as a clone yeah yeah. Once in the seventies in the original Clone Saga, yeah, and then once recently, but that was horrible. Oh, I'm banging Norman Osborn. We have little Norman Osborn, Gwen Stacy, baby. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Was right? that Straczynski? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. no. Was it? No, Cause there's no. Cause, yeah, that was because uh, that was an issue. Amazing Spider-Man five hundred nine. I remember, and Straczynski started his Spider-Man run at issue thirty. I remember that. And shortly after five hundred nine is when he left the book. <laughs> not too soon after. It's, not too it's far. Because it sucked. The guy could write a good like, space. Opera, but he sure as hell couldn't write Spider Man. I mean, that whole this you were destined to be bitten by the spider, you know. The totems? Yeah, you know, like. It's a spider totem. Yeah, like, fuck it's, out of here. They were like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say to that. <laughs> you shits on that. I fart! In your general direction. I dissipated Jedi, no Spidey. But, uh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, Straczynski. And the other. The other, man, that was so horrible. That was his last story arc. It was so horrible. Are you sure? I thought that was, like, his starting story arc. No. Because then he introduced that. Because the other took place What the hell was that villain's name? It took place right before Civil War. Did the other take place before? When they gave him the... No. The, uh, no, I, I think that stuff took place shortly after, like... It was around Civil Spider-Man. War because one of the covers... The movie. No, no, no. I'm because looking, they, they gave him, like, the because, organic web shooters. Right. But then... Because I remember <clears> one of the variant covers to the other... Like, you know how, like, the variants had Spider-Man leaping but in different costumes? Uh-huh. One of them was the Iron Spider costume. Was it? Yeah. And that got introduced right around the Civil War period. Yes. Yeah, it was right man. before... It was during Civil War. Because the whole point was Kingpin hired the assassin to shoot Aunt May, remember? Yeah. Or to shoot Peter, and he accidentally shot Aunt May, and that's when they made the deal with Mephisto. It was after Civil War, because the reason Kingpin hired him to shoot Peter was Peter had already revealed his identity. There's some facts for you. How the hell did they, I don't even remember how they reneged on that one, either. On what? On the Peter no longer... And no one knows the Peter Mephisto, Spider-Man. That was the Mephisto part oh, of the okay. Mephisto deal. It was basically reset everything and take our level. Mephisto's like, I will reset. That was the thing because Aunt May was like, I'll save your life. I'll save your life if you uh, if you give me something that you, that's only you guys can do. It's appearance, your love. So in order to set his life and take back the identity, he reset everything. So that's why after one more day, Peter wakes up and he's apart and he's in his apartment with Harry and everything's hunky dory, you know. Which I think was another bad cop out to everything. It's a, it's. <laughs> Comic books. It's an endless amount of bad cop outs. Especially poor Spider Man. Yeah, I was gonna say they do that more to Spider Man than anybody. At least with the X Men, they're like we eradicated mutant kind. And thoughts, superior Spider Man, success or failure? It's too early to tell, obviously. It's it's one of those things you you can't tell if it is a success right away. You, it's one of those things you're gonna have to wait for. Like so even Amazing Spider Man seven hundred, I would say in terms of what they set out to do, it was successful. Because the whole thing was they wanted to generate buzz, they wanted to generate dollars and hype. It would, what it would do is hype up Superior, and it did. And it did, yeah, absolutely. Free printing totally shit. Did. 
But as far as Superior goes, it's way too early to tell. That's like Age of Ultron <clears> only <throat> being a few issues in. It's like, all right, you really can't judge it hard too harshly until the overall. I think it's one of those things that will read better as a trade or you read it all in one sitting. I don't know happen? about that, man. We'll see. I mean, you know, goddamn, it's, it's completely off subject, Age of Ultron, but it's it's crap. Two issues in, it's horrible. We'll it's see. There's no pretense. It's just like, hey, let's gonna throw you into some shit, and the shit's really not even that good. You know, oh boy, Black Widow's eye got fucked up, and she's hanging out with Moon Knight. Who gives a shit? You know what I think they should just do? Like, Terrible. Order, before, like, Marvel needs to reboot, like, they need to take the... I mean, there's our, let's face it, there's things they've done already they've gotten hell of a lot of backlash for. They've already gotten death threats for Dan Slott, so I say Marvel bites the bullet and they totally restart continuity. Don't throw away the years you did. Acknowledge it, but just kind of like... Pull a, pull a New 52 kind of? Yeah, where only one person kind of know, like Pandora. Right. I think, and I think they've hinted that Phantom, Phantom Stranger knows as well, maybe the Spectre, that... Question. Yeah, that it's been... There's something that needs... There's something not right. Like, Pandora was there when it happened. Right. So, I think... What the Marvel Universe needs to do is have that one character. Who knows? You know, just so... <laughs> Uta. Whatever. The Watcher. Or just, even Madam Web. Is Madam Web even around anymore? Yeah. Just so they know... Oh, well, then again, you can't. Because with that character knowing, what's to say that, that they won't... Oh, one day I was having a beer and I let it slip and now... Well, I mean, you, you know, can take the route of, like, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. At the end of that book, Psycho Pirate knew what happened. And that never came into play for 20 years. True. Or, like I said, you just bite the bullet and do it. Like it, like you said, the end of Infinite Crisis, nobody knew. Like they just, yeah. DC bit the bullet and they took it, you know. But what Marvel should do, or what they should <coughs> do if they decide to go that route, is renumber. Keep it the way it is. Or then, no, they could I don't know. I don't even know what I want. At this point, you might, if you're going to do, if Marvel's going to do a relaunch, which would piss me off when it comes to books like Superior, all new X Men, the relaunch of Uncanny. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy again. being relaunched. Thor. Only it's issue like, yeah. three, it was a mini series. Yeah, no, you know? it's, it's, it's kind of weak. Yeah. But on the, the superior failing, I don't think, like you said, it's I a little too early yeah, to judge. It's too soon to tell. I think it was a mistake to give us Jedi Peter at the end of the first issue. Right, totally. I think we could have dragged this out a little while. I think they could have dragged everything out a little while. It seems that they're not doing enough, there's not enough compression in their storytelling. They're trying to pump it out too fast, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh, we're going to do this, and maybe it's because they know they're going to relaunch, man. Maybe they're mm-hmm. like, we're going to slam this out because the Age of Ultron, all bets are off. Well, regardless of what Marvel decides to do, We'll continue to sit here and judge it and talk about it like like it's our child. You know, right. this is what we do as comic book guys. We're gonna sit here and admonish our babies, right? And this is what we do like it says comic book guys. Cool. You can't say men of comics because we might get sued. <laughs> right. So that's what we do, man. As comic book dudes, pretty much. So uh, thank you. This has been issue three of the Spinner Rack. Always, as always, leave us uh, your comments or get back to us. Let us Ooh, know what you thought. Of. Any questions, critiques, or death threats? Even we'll take a death threat. Hit us up on Facebook from Comics Remix. You know, this is an affiliated show, so I will get your Facebook posts. No Check doubt. out the website, comicsremix.com. Why didn't we plug that in issue two, dude? Totally slip of the mind. Oh, I don't know. So anyways, thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back next week with another fun up issue. Four. Yep, number, number four. four. We'll, we'll get used to calling it an issue. I gotta Someday. call these issues and I call Comics Remix episodes, so there you go. He gets confused. It does. I'm very tired. I got a lot of filming to do tomorrow as well. <laughs> So, well, till next week, as always, I'm Junior. I'm Brian. Tune in next time for the Spinner Rack. Mm-hmm.